today proclaim his plans proclaim his plan just uh, say that out loud proclaim his plan guys we can speak we can talk a lot about the gospel we can have a lot of talk but it's some other cheap story some other story that we had but when we talk about proclaim something about proclaim has to do with authority so there's some other word some other plan that you have that you proclaim over your life it's a plan that has the final authority now if you believe in god and if you believe and respect what he has done through the cross there will be a proclamation in you hello i just heard from one of the lawyers that were in the previous service he spoke to me he said uh, government can make a lot of laws but unless published through the cassette and, and out there at the one moment it must be proclaimed you can get some laws that they want to go through uh, and they pass it through government and everything yes 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 but it's not yet proclaimed now, i want to say it's it's there it's there in the heavenlies but here on earth it needs to be proclaimed through you and through my life are you with me so in proclaiming is you decide it will be the final say you know people can talk a lot let's say here we are in a in a government and in the hall and everybody's wara 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 and speak to one another and there's a lot of conversation and suddenly somebody's standing up and say order and then there's silence because something will be proclaimed by a king something will be proclaimed by a, the one that has a final authority in that assembly are you with me and sometimes we must call our thoughts and all the voices and all the things and all the stories to order and say order in the name of jesus for the proclamation of the lord so even now you can add what i say when you read the word you can add the stories very nice uh, stories i agree with the story but it's not a proclamation unless i decide it has the final authority and it will be proclaimed through my life but I can sit here, I can hear the word, and I say, I proclaim my opinion to have the final say. Nobody will say it, but it just happens that way. But it cannot be anymore in Jesus' name. The church of Christ is going to rise up in maturity in the end time. And their proclamation will be the final say. The final say in Bluefontein, the final say in the township, the final say over the city, the final say over poverty. is all the clever, nice ideas that we can come up with. Or somewhere the church will rise up. In every community, in every place, and a declaration will be made, a proclamation will be made, and things will change. Why will things not change? Because government is corrupt, because this one is that, because that one is that, because of the underprivileged, overprivileged, whatever privilege you get, because the church is not proclaiming the plan of God. Because it's not God's plan that everybody, that a lot of people must go hungry. Hello? Hello? Tonight, there will be people not far from you that will be very, 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 very cold. Some kids. And you know, right now, or this afternoon, or this evening, I can grow up beyond myself that it's about other people also, and they say, Holy Spirit, guide me. And you say, Holy God, with you, all things are possible. So your hand can be in that place that they experience a the warmth. They don't know where it comes from. They don't have the physical blanket but they your hand can be there lord your hand can be there please lord i pray for your hand in some of those places some of those shacks some of those places where they don't have enough that that kid will know we we pray that god will help us some other time and there was just this warmth there why can it not happen only if the church cannot believe that god can work in such a way yes we better get the blankets we better get a lot of stuff but what is his plan that you proclaim it is his plan that a lot of kids must get cold tonight that they must be cold they mustn't have blankets that you must have it and they mustn't have it that's god's plan Robbie, are you with me i'm just no no guilt trip but just a challenge to say you can make the difference now you can make the difference tonight amen are you with Okay, that's talking about proclaiming. So you proclaim into that situation. Wherever in the world, you can be there with a proclamation in what you proclaim. 
you hear. My spiritual dad, he proclaimed. When we got the land for free and my spiritual mother heard about it and spiritual father was never already, he, she cried and said his prayer, his proclamation, what he prayed was not in vain. Because God said to him 40 years ago about that in the north there will be a, a big piece of ground for a school, for a church, for all old age home, for, for a lot of ministry. There will be a, a big piece of land. And he, they came in the north, they prayed, they proclaimed, they, they spoke the word. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. But it was a legacy already, an inheritance already in the spirit. A spiritual son came, he pointed at the ground, he laughed at it and said, this would have been <laughs> plan A for the church. Yeah. And then received 215 hectares for free in the ministry. Hello. There was a proclamation in the spirit. And nobody could hold it back. Not even a, a spiritual son that couldn't have 1% faith for it. They trust the Lord for seven hectares for 1.3 million. Oh, come on, my brother, my sister. You go and you start to understand honor. How to honor, how to respect others, how to respect your own life, how to respect the word. Start believing it. Amen. And you'll be surprised in the legacy, in the inheritance of three, four, five, six, seven generations back for, of people that prayed for certain things to happen. How many in the fourth generation do you know? There's more than one grand, granny and grandpa that you have. It, it goes by two, two, if, as far as I know. Hello. And how many of them prayed a lot of stuff and where their kids or grandkids didn't take it yet by faith? That's part of your inheritance. If you have the guts that we grow up and that we understand, honor, and respect and go with what God has for us and proclaim His plan. You proclaim the will of God and whatever generation, generations prayed according to that plan, those prayers are in line with your prayer when you are in the Spirit. No ancestral worship, that's a copycat of a ten rand. The true ten rand. There's a legacy of prayer and faith. Of people what they fought for. You don't have respect for your, for your ancestors. You will miss it. Go and frack in the, uh, go and die in the Bustain. Desert. Go and die in the desert. Wonderful. You'll go to heaven. But if you want to inherit what God has for you, respect. Respect. Devil cannot think out a new thing. You can just copycat. The demonic copycat is ancestral worship. Demonic cop co copycat is thinking you speak to ancestors, but you only speak to demons. You are a joke. Not one of you. It's like a comedy. Devil eating his popcorn, looking at you. You're the comedy. Think you're speaking to ancestors. You're speaking only to demons. You cannot speak to the ancestors. It's not possible. Oh, but it's real. Yes, demons have voices. Demons will speak to you. <laughs> Make a joke of you. Okay? Ah, uh ah, -uh, but you honor your ancestors. God says, when you honor your father and your mother, then you will inherit what God has for you. Why? You honor by building on their strengths, learning from their mistakes, not judging the mistakes so that you then do it ten times worse. Ah, uh ah. -uh. But what they prayed for, what they prayed for, what they proclaimed, generations that proclaimed, the will of God proclaimed according to his word, according to his will. That can become a reality in you. Amen. First scripture. Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. And that repentance for forgiveness of sins, repentance and forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name. Everybody say proclaimed. In his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. What are we talking about? It must be proclaimed. It must be God ordering you. You better with authority declare what he has done on earth. Not tell a story. Don't tell yourself a story about Jesus. It must be a proclamation in your life. It must be a proclamation through your life. It must be, I have respect for what happened. I, was, I have respect for what was said. I have respect for what happened, and with respect I will declare it to people around me. Amen. Next one. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. To two or three people where God has called me. Uh, in the great assembly. 
Indeed, I do not restrain my lips, O Lord. You yourself know, you yourself know what I'm doing, what not. You can choose to restrain your lips from proclaiming the good news. Bloemfontein, there's good news. Whatever area there's good news, whatever town, township, there's good news. Nation, there's good news. Why do they not know the good news? Because you and me, we restrain our lips from telling them the good news. How unfair, how selfish would it be? We're not doing it, I know. I'm just talking about people who do that. Okay. May God help you that we will get out of that type of selfishness. Where we can pray for our needs, our situation. But what about out there? What about out there? You've been called here for a purpose. Otherwise, you're supposed to be dead and go to heaven. But you are here with a purpose. You are here to proclaim. You are here to proclaim what Christ has done. Amen. I have proclaimed the news. Unfortunately, unfortunately, God forgive us. Unfortunately, so many times we proclaim religious things. Things. So many times religion proclaimed where people are judged. People are under the curse of a law being placed. So many times in the name of religion, millions of people were slaughtered. Religion killed more people than the First and Second World War altogether. Religion is a dangerous thing. If you're standing and proclaiming a, 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 some Christian message, but it's not the good news. They must know there's some good news out there. Bluefontein, there's some good news. I know. Why? Because the church grew up and they rose in stature and they started to proclaim what God has given them. They started to believe that this is authority. This is not cheap stuff. This is not some other story. They had the guts to believe this as the final authority. All hell and every demon, there's one agenda. As long as you don't believe this is the final authority, as long as you think this is a story, then hell and demons are safe with you. Because when you start to believe this, Jesus chased the enemy away. Jesus stood against the enemy with the word. It was written. The, the Bible says this. You can do this. You can change the stones into bread. The word of God also say. That you will not live by bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. With the word, Jesus stood against the enemy. How will you do it? You found a better way than Jesus? No, not at all. Hey, as was here. In the great assembly. Good news in the great assembly. Where's the great assembly in your life? Yes, it's here. When we learn how to proclaim, when, you, when we sing, you open your mouth and you, mean, you, you put your words, you put your life into the words, the word into you. Hello? Or we teach one another when we hear the word, when we sing the word, that is cheap. It's something I've heard before. But I learn how it does not have to touch me. The word does not have to touch my life. But I believe that when there's a proclamation, you give attention. In that assembly, all the people, all the ministers, everybody can blah, 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 speak, and it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. But when someone rises up with authority and there's a proclamation, then we need to be silence. Hello? Are you still here? Supposed to be. Okay, next one. I have not hidden. Everybody say, I have not hidden. Your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your, declared your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. You have the authority. You have the capacity to conceal. To conceal. Hello? To hide God's love, God's righteousness, God's grace from Bloemfontein. You have the capacity to make sure that they don't know that God loves them. That the guys don't know that so that they know they have hell on earth and when they die they just rot like a rat there's no future for them you, you can do that that's actually freaky I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart so that means you can make a decision to hide it how when it's from your mouth all your opinions all your this all your that all your whatever 
want to come from your heart. It's not like you say, I will hide the good news from the people in Bloemfontein. Ooh, the freak will say that. But what do you do? I can be so full of myself, so speak all my opinions, speak my issues, speak my whatever in my head, in my head, in my heart. That I even hide the quality of what God has for me from myself. I can hide that what God has for me from myself by giving all these other voices such a lot of authority. No, man, that's not from God. I have not hidden your righteousness, the place where we can stand before the Lord within my heart. I have declared, everybody say declared, your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. You have proclaimed it. Authority came out. You've proclaimed it. But you can conceal it out there. That Blue Fontaine know there's no hope for you. The nation must know there's no hope for you. There's no eternal hope. Just live whatever world the world throw at you and just know after that you're, what does it say? Dead like a rat, whatever. There's nothing further in life. How, how freaky selfish it will be. But God going to change us in Jesus' name. We're going to grow up. And tomorrow we will not hide. You will not hide from the school. You will not hide from the kids for them to know they are precious in God's sight. You will not hide from them anymore. Than thinking they are just a nightmare of whatever. They are the dream, an excellent dream in the heart of the Father. They will know there's a God that loves them. There's a God, there's a Father that believes in them. They want them to be His children forever and ever and ever. With Him as an eternal home. How will you conceal it? Speak what demons tell you. Be, be, be misled and speak a lot of other rubbish. That is how you will make sure it's concealed. The good gospel, the good news. Uh -uh, not going to do that anymore. Next one. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome. Hope. And a future. A hope and a future. There's a hope for Bluefontein. There's a hope for this nation. There's a future for this nation. There's a future for every child that grew up without a father and a mother without a lot of food. There, there's, there's a hope for them. They will never know it as long as the church stays selfish. As long as you're busy with yourself and the gospel must work for your needs and what you need. Yeah. But if you want to work with your father... If you want to walk with God, they, that's a different story. That's a different story. God must help you. God must help you. For I know the thoughts. God, your father knows. He knows. He knows. When I was in a certain turmoil in my life, and God tuned me, challenged me, encouraged me altogether, I wrote this song, In the stillness of who you are, there I find peace. But the main sentence, In the stillness of who you are, I know that you know. That was the thing that arrested me the most. I know that you know. I know that you, my father, knows everything that I'm going through. And that, in that place, I find peace and security. Are you with me? God says, I, I know what you're going through. But I know what I have in store for you. God is so absolutely in detail, in detail, in detail. He he knows exactly what he has planned for you, and he is excited about that. Now, where's the problem? For us to know what he knows. And his perspective of what is happening. I know the thoughts and plans to give you hope and a future. There's hope for the country, hope for the future, hope for the company, hope for the school, hope for the university. Unless the church is silent. Then we can seal the excellent plans and dream that the Father has for the university. We can conceal it. We can make sure that the kids don't know it, that they think they come from a baboon. They think they are it or that or a, I don't know, whatever. As long as they don't find who they are in Christ. Hell says. And your silence says, yes, it's okay. But not one of you are silent. In Jesus' name. We will go out there. But silence is, you can proclaim the plan in the Spirit through prayer. You can proclaim the plan in the Spirit. Gaza will know that God is there. I don't, I don't know. God will provide. 
God will provide. God, you speak it forth. You don't experience anointing. You feel there's no impact. You open your mouth and proclaim his plan. If you feel like it or not feel like it, if you're growing in maturity, it's not about you, it's about them. Amen. Next one. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. You with me? Next one. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim good tidings. Tidings. And that are good news of his salvation on a Sunday. Amen. No. Yes, read the scripture. Of his salvation day after day. Everybody say day after day. You know, that's how we have our days. Day after day. You must stand up and you must do this. There's a daily routine that can become a curse. The daily routine that become your God. Daily routine that's your excuse. Why a lot of things cannot happen. Because of all the stuff that you must face tomorrow. All the things that must happen. There's no time for this or that or that or that. Says who? God said to you. My child, there's no time to have time with me. There's no time to have with my word tomorrow. Yes. Just remember that. <laughs> okay, that's when you say there's no time. When God said there's no time for that. Sing to the Lord. Everybody say, sing. Okay, that's what it means. So make sure that there's a, a song in your heart. Make sure there's a hey in your life. Everybody say, hey. Okay, so your life must be high. Where you enter, there's a song that's entering. You know, you enter the classroom tomorrow. They're going to think you're freaky if you say, good morning. And don't do that. I'm still saying, you must come in like a song. Not a klaglit. What's a klaglit in English? A lamentation-ish thing. All right. Proclaim good news, good tidings of his salvation day after day. Declare his glory. That's his beauty. Declare all the suffering. Declare all the things that you're going through. Yeah, be honest. But at the end of the day, you better declare a day that is beautiful. You better declare the beauty from God. You better declare the, the beauty that is from him. You look into the word. That is your mirror. You look at yourself and you find a beautiful you. They say, I will find a beautiful me. In the word of God. That's the only place. The rest is a joke. Okay. Without the word, without the cross, you're rubbish. Rubbish. Die and go to hell. Because what we've done is a lot of rubbish. Created the world that's under a curse. Where the God of this world is Satan himself. No, but you're from a different kingdom. Not from this world. In this world, but from a different kingdom. Ambassador come to know that declare his glory among the nations his glory what is the beauty god has for every nation what is the beauty god has for blue fountain for for Trani, for whatever for Gauteng? what is the beauty from heaven for Gauteng? hopefully the church will open its mouth as you hear his marvelous deeds among all the nations He's marvelous. Proclaim. Proclaim. That means you're a, you're a child, you're a lighty, and you brag about your hero. The lighty with a hero, you don't tell the lighty that has a hero. Now you must talk about your hero. No, you're totally crazy. You don't have to say that to that little boy. He's going to open his mouth and he's not going to stop talking about the hero. No, that is how you enter the kingdom as a child. And if you can enter the kingdom as a child, that's what you will do. You will brag about your hero, Jesus Christ. You will brag about his marvelous deeds, what God is doing, what he has done. You don't know what he's doing in your life, but you have seen in so many others' lives and so many in the past of things that he has done. And from the testimonies of others, you draw courage, encouragement for your life. Don't be jealous of what God has done for somebody else. You know, you stand in faith for 30 years that God will provide this and this and this. And then this other knoll came to repentance. He made a hell of a mess of his life. And then he prays and just suddenly, boom, he receives that. Yes, Lord, that's fair. You rejoice in what God gave that knoll 
that came to repentance last week and I prayed for something and it happened. You stand for 30 years for that and you never received anything. Because God is using you, has a different calling, a different way of dealing with you at that moment. Are you here? May God help you. All right, there we go. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are representing. Everybody say representing, signifying, proclaiming the fact that the Lord's death of the Lord's death until he comes again. There's a significance, there's a signing, there's signifying. There's a signing through your life. There's a, there's a showing through your life what Christ has done. There's a, you're representing the fact. You're a, a representative of the fact that Jesus died on the cross. Where's the proof that Jesus died for me on the cross? Oh, I could look at the life of Peter, then I know. He's representing the fact. I can see through his eyes. He, <laughs> I look at his life, then I know, okay, there's a God who loves me and gave himself for me. When I look at his life, what he said, what he prayed for me, how he responded to me, that's supposed to be you and me. Amen? Tell your neighbor, that must be you. Okay. Proclaim the fact of the Lord's death. That's my brother, my sister. That's when you have communion. Many places where there were demonic, demonic, demonic activity, even with ancestral chamors and whatever. Then people come and they have communion there. You won't believe it. They have communion in that place. And suddenly the area is clean. And there's no demonic activity anymore. You know the people like they did even on the farm. You know, slaughter the cats and did some stuff there at the, at the crosses. With the needles and our alasaka chamors and whatever chamors magic. But then what we did, we went with communion. In so many parts of the, of the farm even. And he just lifted. They can sacrifice a cat. But you know, a sacrificing of a cat is not in a trillionth to be compared with the sacrifice of a lamb of God. Oh, come on, man. What a, what a joke. People think, but how will that thing have authority if we don't take up our authority through the blood? That's the only way. Hell can have authority over you. That's the only way how the demons can play soccer with you as the soccer ball. You know, and, and enjoy their life with you. You know, that's the only way it can happen. When you are foolish enough not to understand who you are in Christ. But if people are foolish out there, they're not foolish. It's the church that's supposed to rise up in unselfishness and in love. And go and tell the people there's good news for them. There's a hopeful future. For every man and woman. Doesn't matter corruption. Doesn't matter underprivilege. Doesn't matter whatever you went through. You honor that? Okay. You don't have a hopeful future. Blame others forever and ever. That. Or honor God. God I receive. You have a future. You have a hope for me. And God will show for you. God will show you how. God will show you how. There's hope for a major provision. Just give the five loaves of bread and two fish to God. Don't use it as an excuse. Right. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Everybody say ask. Seek. Knock. Now we're going to talk about prayer. Now what am I saying? The problem is tomorrow something will be given to you. A very busy day. Something you will find. Crisis management. Something you will find. You will find you are irritated. You don't want to study. You will find that there's temptations coming your way for the cell phone. You find that there's certain things happening with you that you will just feel depressed. Depression is waiting for you tomorrow. Uh, stress is waiting for you tomorrow. And you will find the stress. Stress will be faithful to you to rock up. A lot of things will find you tomorrow. A lot of things will be given to you. A lot of things will be open to you. And hell will open the fear. Hell will open the lust. Hell will open a lot of hamors to you. Ah, so it will just come automatically. But when you would ask the Lord in prayer, when you will seek His kingdom, when you will knock in the right place, and you stay there till He opens the door, 
or not. You will find excellence for your life. You will find excellence for your life. So I'm going to give you a quick, that was the last scripture I think. So I'm going to give you a quick teaching by faith in Jesus' name. Within 20 minutes or 15 minutes, we are ending off with that, of a teaching of five sun, four Sundays. That's four hour teaching that's now in Kriari. It's an eight hour teaching and it's going to happen now in 20 minutes. Okay, so you can listen. Please, if you don't, please come and do that subject. I said, please. We're going to come with this place of a daily routine. Tomorrow, a lot of things. Hell, demons, your flesh will have that scripture for you. <laughs> it will be given to you a lot of stuff. It will find you. Hello? Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will. Knock it will be. A lot of stuff from hell will be open to you. The world will open up doors for you to do whatever you want. In some places there is a certain discipline. In the school you will not do this. You will not steal. You will not that. You will not that. That door is not open for you. But hell will make sure that you understand there is an open door that you can justify why you can take certain things, why you can think certain things, why you can steal certain things, why you can curse people in your heart and judge them and close your heart towards certain people because, oh, that opportunities will rise up for you. But your daily routine is going to be the biggest curse in your life. And that will be your God, and that will be your excuse why you cannot live the dream that God has for you. Your daily routine, what's going to happen tomorrow? With 300 decisions that you will make during the day. And some of their decisions are just automatically there. Okay, but before that, if you have a daily routine, according to that, write down. One was daily routine. Number two, action plans. Action plans. You will have to find action plans to get out of the crisis management, to get out of, to get the job done, to, to catch all the balls. To, to, you must have an action plan in your head. My action plan is to justify myself why I will sit on the phone and not listen when I'm supposed to listen in the class. I will have an action plan how to justify myself with a lot of rubbish. That's now in the wrong way. But you know, the action plan comes from something. You have a strategy. For your life. My strategy is I can do what I want. My strategy is there's no conscience that speaks to me. My strategy is I will hear the word, but it's not necessarily going to touch me. My strategy is I will pray, 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 pray when I need something. My strategy, that I have a certain strategy. You live according to, according to a certain strategy. And you decide that your daily routine, whatever hell and the world and your flesh can throw at you, that formulate your action plan that come from a certain stra strategic way of living. Let's say strategy is like you have a strategic way of living, a certain lifestyle. But you know that strategy for how you live will determine how you see your needs. I have a need for a car. I have a need for this amount of money because I have the strategy to get out of that stuff. So I need a million. I must work and I'm going to work the next. How many years are you going to work to save a million? Just think of your life. Think of people out there. How long do they work before they save up a million? Eh? Now you're going to borrow from the bank. And how many times did you pay back the thing? You borrowed 300,000. And how, when you are finished paying it off, the bank got another 500,000 through all the interest. Or the rent. Or, or what do you call that? Interest. No. Okay, so what are we? That is your perspective of your circumstances. Perspective of your daily needs. I need this, I need that, I need that, I need that. And that is what my daily routine tells me. And you become in this, your daily needs, you are, you, you are fed up and you need this so that you don't stress. You need that not to be fed up. You need this. And, and if I have this type of holiday, then my need to... To be refreshed is fulfilled. I need to get rid of the stress. need to get rid of the fear. <sighs> but where did it come from? It came from the, the fact that you started this side. With your daily routine. Product of circumstance. Product of even your success. Here in tomorrow you can be very successful. And then you replace the voice of God with the, play, uh, the voice of success. Every time Israel did that. 
Every time Israel did that, when they became successful, their hearts turned away from God, turned away from God, turned away from God. Let me say it a hundred times because that's how many times it's written in the Bible. Their heart went away from God. And then God need to change their circumstances, their daily routine, their daily experience of things in their life so that they, with their heart, they run out to God. Where are you supposed to start? And that is with a dream from the heart of the Father. And then they start there with a dream in the heart of the Father. And they go through processes. And then more and more, God is a God that He wants to make you successful in a lot of things. He wants to bless you. And then you experience certain things. And here, the biggest danger is not when you're in a crisis, but when you are in success. But you must be able to handle success. That success will work for you. You don't work so that you can find success. Success is called Jesus Christ. Perfect, perfect, perfect way of success through the cross. It is finished. The most successful, perfect human being on earth. When he said, it is finished. Into your hands I commit my, my spirit, he said. Wow, and that success is living in you. That success has the final say. That success is the proclamation that you must proclaim out there to Bluefontaine. How they can experience and taste success and be a product of success so that you can be called more than a conqueror, more than the success. You're the result, you're a product of the success. Are you here? Where are we now? Oh, we're not with that one. Daily routine. Based on that, crisis action plans. Because you are a strategic person. That action plans make you, uh, that you live with this according to certain strategy. You're just always in crisis management to get certain things done. No, with that, you have a perspective over your daily needs just to get above everything, just to cope with everything. Or just to run with whatever you had. What was successful yesterday will be successful today. Rubbish. Yesterday's success can be wiped just away. Pew. Powerful kingdoms of this world. The Roman Empire through many nations and just one day gone. Boom. Communism one day there. And next moment, boom. With some youth that started at the university to say, we're not going for this anymore. Just like this, pew, and it's gone. The empires of this world. Just the next moment, boom. It's gone. Oh. You put your trust in the name of the Lord, not in some trust in all system, may trust. I put my trust in the name of the Lord. Amen. Okay, some of some from my perspective of the needs. What's before that? <sighs> then you see certain desires. I have a desire just to quit. I have a desire just to go and lay down. I have a desire just to have a peaceful moment with those people. Well, that man, I just want to have peace for a moment. I have certain desires just to go on holiday and to do this. Okay. Okay, but how many of that desires, those desires are from that place of a product of whatever you did in your daily routine? And how much of those desires is what God desire and you desire it with him? Because your heart and his heart are one. Not super spiritual, it must become reality. Okay, desires. Out of the desire, I have a desire to smack you, so therefore the next point, you've written that down. You have perspective of daily needs. Did you write that down? And then the next one was? Ah, oh, here, help me. Okay, just look at the book. First one was what? Daily routine. And then out of that you must have action plans. And then you become a strategic person or you have a strategy of for life based on that. And out of that... You have a perspective about your daily needs, that you're going to live above that, or daily needs will determine how you live. And from that, you can have certain desires to be fed up, desire to uh, fluke that guy, desire to be, do this or to do that. Hello? And from those desires, you make some stupid choices or some good choices. The next one was choices. Do you have it? Are you still here? Hallelujah. 
with all your choices at the end of the day, with the choices that you make, you will formulate a vision for your life. You have a vision. But how many of that comes from a need? You know, some people went through a lot of hell as babies, as kids. And because of, you've seen so many people being molested and this and this and this, therefore you be, want to become this, you know, some other medical profession or you're a social worker or this and this, because you saw with the needs and you have compassion on that. That's, that's, that's okay. But you need to know, God, what am I supposed to do when I see the need? Is This is my calling. Whatever your calling is from God, you must do it with God and then you'll have impact. If you don't have impact, oh, no, you must become an engineer. But wh how are you going to help the kids? No, you're going to start to pray for them. And later you're going to start to speak into the life of 20 or 30 social workers. You're going to have certain input in that profession. That's what God said to me, actually, with when I had to leave medical school. And I said, God, I want to go behind the iron kids. I want to become a missionary doctor. And God said, no. I said, God, but that I have a passion for that. God said, you will have impact in a lot of medical people. And they must go, not you. But there's hundreds and I believe thousands that will go that we will have impact through and into their lives. Are you here? Even though in a hospital, I would like the smell of a hospital. I would have stayed there in, in emergencies. I would have enjoyed it. I'm not feeling today muff and sacrifice I had to make. I'm living the dream. I'm enjoying what God has given me. Hello? But then run into what God has for you. And you will have impact in that medical field. You will have impact in that field. But just because you saw a lot of turmoil, you saw a lot of hurt, you saw a lot of trauma, you saw a lot of, and you have compassion, that does not determine that that is your calling. So what you see here, now I'm coming through, I'm coming through, I'm coming through, that does not determine my vision, even though God will take me through a lot of things. The vision is what you see. Vision is what you see where you're going. And vision can be your God. And the voice of vision can be your God. I have a vision. I have a compassion for the people. Therefore, I will kill this Egyptian because I have compassion on my people. Moses killed the Egyptian and there he's postponing for another 30 years for this whole nation to get out of slavery. Another year, 30 years of suffering because he jumped the gun. He took the voice of vision. Instead of the voice of God. Are you here? Let's not mess up the timing of deliverance for the people in Bluefontaine and, and nations. Amen. Come on, man. And vision. Now with that vision. You know what's going to happen with that vision? You're going to have some energy for certain things. You will, have, you will get zert up with certain things. You have some other political vision. You've seen people that become zert up. They have certain passion in that. They will give their life. But sometimes totally misled with a vision that is not even godly. With a vision that's not even from God. <sighs> your energy, your zert upness comes from where? From a vision. From the way that you see things that is not from God. That is not from God. <sighs> what is this passion in you? Or the fact that there's no passion in you. You just carry on with what you need to do. Because the life, life is running over you. You're coping with life. You're trying to deal with life. You're trying to survive. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Oh. <laughs> and so, <laughs> that energy, with that passion. At the end of the day, you are the dream of some other thing. You become the reality. A nightmare a nightmare created through your life, but not the dream in the heart of the Father. A dream in your fleshly heart or a dream whatever the world say you will be. The world dream about kids that won't learn that you, you, you come from a baboon, man, and you can have anything and you, you ask anything according to some or other sexual desire or think that, that you think could be a sexual desire. And the most horrific things, what they put that, this is a dream that you can become. This is a dream that we as the world, as the nation, through laws and through this and through that and through education, we present to you who you can be. You don't have to have some other religious thing. We don't believe, uh, we are not standing for faith and that type of, we are, we are in a realist 
realistic about life. You need a hell of a lot of faith to believe you come from a baboon and it was just one explosion, boom! And then all the order, trillions of orders, order in your body just was created by chaos. How freaky must it be? You need a lot of faith to believe that. Are you still here? Okay, now this thing must be reversed. Now we're halfway through. So where are you going to start? My brother, my sister, for tomorrow, you're going to start here with you just carrying on. You're just carrying on. I don't know what's the English for that. You're just wara wara in with your day. Or you're going to say, I'm not, will not be the product of tomorrow. Paul says, life is Christ, die is gain. Life is Christ, there's only a tomorrow. There's only a today. There's not a, you have today. And today Christ must be in your day. That doesn't mean you must pray for 12 hours and you must read the Bible for 10 hours. That's not what I'm saying. But he's visible in your day. He's with you. Sometimes when you do things with a person, it's not like you are aware of that person in the sense that you talk to him the whole time and focus on him. And, but you just know you are doing it with this person. And he's like you encouraged because, are you with me? Some guy, they're studying in one side, but sometimes when there's four or five studying, you feel encouraged that there's a, there's a team. And so with God, that you are aware of him, he's with you in it. He's with you in it. And any time, you can ask him something. Not corrupt notes. It will give, he will give you the truth in that what you're supposed to do. Is you let me Life is Christ, die is gain. Die is gain when you die and go to heaven. But die the death of your flesh, the death of your fears, the death of your anxiety, the death of your lust, the death of your pathetic reasoning, the death of all that stuff is gain because then there's more of God, less of you. More of God, less of you. That is profit. Life is Christ, die is profit. Go for that prophet. But how will I get then in my daily routine? I must go all the way and I must sit here with a God. With a God. With a dad. With a papa. With a father that has an excellent dream for my life. Because he looked at heaven and decided he wanted more. And he created a dream. And you were born from that dream in his heart. Oh, are you with me? So you better go and sit with your father. Even though you got hurt by fathering or leadership or what, whoever, through the blood of Christ, go and sit with your father. And you know, when I, God gave me all these facets, nine, actually 12, I wrote it down. Just, it just came to me and I wrote it down. And when I wrote it down, afterwards God said to me, go to the Lord's Prayer. And I opened up the Lord's Prayer. And I was here and there in tears, but there was just His presence. And every facet of the Lord's Prayer was just linking up with each one of those words, the one after the other after the other. I'm going to just quickly share it with you. Remember, there's an eight-hour subject about this. The first one, what did we say? What did we say at the end? Dream. If you know, I must start with a dream. You're there, look at the bottom. Dream. Our Father who are in heaven. The biggest dream from God. When he had heaven, he had everything. But he had nobody that would call him Father. But he created nations. And that every human being, the, what he, uh, that human being can become the most is child. To become a child of God. And that the nations will call me Father and I will call them their children, and I will come and I will dwell among them, make my home with them. That was the Father's dream. How must you pray? You start with the dream of the Father. You start with the dream that God had, and that is you call Him Father according to His dream. Amen. You start with your dad's dream. Our Father who are in heaven, I'm presenting myself according to your dream to you. Oh, Father, we are in heaven. The second one, holy is thy name. Not the guy that said, hello, what is your name? Hello, it be thy name. <laughs> okay, where am I now? <laughs> holy is your name. It's all about your name. Now, what did we say? If it's the dream, and with the dream, 
you must find the passion. Not from that side. That's where the curse is a slave product of circumstance. And now you find with the father, you see his dream. Get into the word to find out the father's dream for your life. His, his heart for you. So from that place, you find a passion. God was driven by what? By himself. Holy is thy name. Holy means cannot be compared. Holy means there's no words to compare your name. There's nothing that I can compare you with. That means holy, holy, holy. Uncomparable. Uncomparable. I cannot grasp the fullness of who you are. I cannot compare it with anything. That's the word holy. Holy is your name. Your name is love. God is driven by his love. Your name is peace. Led by his peace. Driven by his joy. Hello. He's driven by himself. By the beauty of holiness, driven by perfection, because he is perfection. Are you with me? So in his dream, he's driven by himself. The atheist, we did uh, prophetic counseling questions with him, and he asked, what is there above God? What is the concept above God? And in the answer I wrote, the love of God. And I was just so amazed. And I said to him, you know, God submitted to what is more than him, and that was his own love. God so loved the world that had, he had to give himself, lay down himself at the cross. He was driven by himself, and he, because he is called love. So your passion must be, like the word says, 2 Corinthians 5, you must be driven by love, you must be led by peace, the joy of the Lord is your strength, his energy, his excitement about you, that's your strength. He's your driving force. Amen. So that life is Christ. And I is gay. Okay. You are still here? Dreaming out of the Father, you sit with your Father. The rest of your life, you're going to do it with your dad. You're going to dream with your Father. Amen. And then you're going to be driven by who He is. God was driven by Himself. Holy is your name. And then, what was the third thing we said? Vision. Vision. Hey? If you go from the bottom, you've written there. The one before was dream go back passion the next one vision what is the vision our father who in heaven holy is your name thy kingdom come you need to have a kingdom vision my brother my sister kingdom vision is the king must speak the king must have the final say in education the king must have the final say in every sphere of life the king must have the final say in blue fountain the king must have the final say. Oh, yeah, the demonic can grow in this. In some towns, then this demonic chamors has the final say. In certain nations, some chamors has the final say. Are you with me? Uh uh. But we pray. We pray. And in prayer, we declare. Let's say, in prayer, we declare. When you proclaim his plan, first of all, you do it in the spirit. What you proclaim is plan. In the secret place. Proclaim his plan in the secret place and it will happen out there. You proclaim the plan of God for Gaza tonight. You proclaim the plan of God for the education system, for the politicians. You proclaim, it's not for you just to have an opinion. No, that's Pharisees and that's whoever out there. There's just spectators of life, they don't have a life spectators of life they have an opinion but they don't have a life oh god must help me god must help you are you here dream our father who are in heaven passion driven by himself holy is your name whatever when you know the names of god you are driven by those names amen vision his kingdom his kingdom he must rule he must rule in your life he must rule in your marriage he must rule in your families he must rule in your finances whatever he says that goes it's not he must come and he must be a servant and change your finances. He must come and change this and he must come and change that. Uh -uh, you don't have the final say. You can ask and present it to God in prayer. But God, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. And then the next one before that was choices. Choices. Oh, the Lord's Prayer. The next point in the Lord's Prayer. Your will be done. I was just shocked when I... Put the two, the words that God gave me and the Lord's Prayer next to one another. Your will be done. Your will be done. My brother, there's a cup for you to drink. There's a cup for you to drink. God, 
Let this cup be removed from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. In every situation, there's a cup to drink. Some of it is excellent. Some of it is not so excellent. Some of it is rough. Some of it is your, 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 your. It's not based on the past. Jesus revealed himself as the son of God. And the miracles, and the miracles, and the miracles, and the demons, left, and the healings, and the son of God. And suddenly in Gethsemane, not the son of God, but he presented himself as the... Lamb of God. And suddenly the lamb was let. And he closed his mouth like a sheep. Closed his mouth. Until on the cross he said, it is finished. And he presented himself as the lamb of God. According to your identity in Christ, you present yourself the way God wants you to present yourself. And sometimes the cup is not easy. Sometimes the cup is not easy. The church in Gaza is not easy. The church in, in Ukraine is not easy. The church in, in Africa, many places, many places where they die, die, die of hunger. And the mother see their child over two, three months, how they die. Step by step by step. Oh, oh man, where's the church? How, where's the right perspective about life? Where's the God of love? How can the church say there's a God of love? Just praying God will protect you and he will provide for you. That's rubbish. This is rubbish, they say. But they just need wisdom. Wisdom. How to present the gospel. Are you here? May God help us. So, where are we now? Choices. The one before that was? Desires. What's the desire? On earth as it is in heaven. God, you have an excellent dream. You have a desire for the nations to call you Father. You have a desire for a lot of things. You have a desire for Bloemfontein. You have a dream. You have a desire for this Bloemfontein. Hello? But there's a Hamors that we create and we can desire the Hamors. The Hamors world that we created in Bloemfontein or in, in this country. But then there's a, there's a world that God desires. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And that world that He dreamt about in heaven on earth, as you dreamed about Bluefontein, as you dreamt about that school, as you dreamt about my life, as you dreamt about your spouse, as he dreamt about your kids. Please, Lord, in my kid's life, as it is in heaven. The way that you see my kid, the way that you are excited about my kid's future, God, please, let it be in my child's future on earth. As it is now, 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 a reality in heaven. You proclaim his plan for your child. You proclaim his plan for Bloemfontein. On earth as it is in heaven. Amen. That's desires. The next one was what? Easy one. Perspective of daily needs. Hmm? Was it that? Hmm. Seems to me. In the Lord's Prayer, what does it say? Give us today our daily bread. <laughs> well, this time I was very excited. Okay. Give us today our daily bread. And if you don't pray that, God's going to let you die of hunger. No, no. Why must you pray, give us today our daily bread? My perspective of my daily bread is, I choose to be dependent on you. I choose to say, my daily bread must come from you. And as we all know, the first temptation... From hell against Jesus was about his perspective about daily needs. He was hungry. He was hungry, and his father can provide from any any time. He, from this stones he come come bread. And then Jesus said, "I will not live by bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God." Daily, I need the word. Daily, you need the word. If you say you want a life with Christ and life that has meaning, daily, God, give me to understand daily daily this bread that i cannot live without you make the choice not to live without this amen your perspective about your daily de daily needs is in here okay okay that's why you study word that's why you make it part of your life not because it's a creare exam okay good that's perspective of daily needs and then the one before that is what strategies you will be a strategic man. What does the prayer say? Give us today our daily breads. And then 
Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. What are we talking about? Your strategy is only through the cross and the blood. You have no strategy. You have one strategy, die and go and burn in hell for eternity. But if there's any other strat strategic life for you into eternity, it's through, only through the cross. It's only through what Christ has done for you that you can be forgiven through the blood. And that in that way you forgive yourself and you forgive others. You want to be a strategic man only through the cross. Paul accomplished so much and he says, I have nothing to boast about except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 6, 14. Hey, my life, I died in Christ. You have some rotten, frotten life without Christ. It must just die at the, on the cross. It must just die on the cross. This chacha life must die on the cross. If you're a strategic man, you understand the cross. The word of the cross is the power of God for, unto salvation. But the word of the cross is foolishness. It's foolishness. It's foolishness to your flesh. Foolishness. God's strategic life is foolishness for the flesh. The word says. Understand the word of the cross. That's the sign of the new covenant, the cross. Okay. You're with me, strategic man, strategic woman, because you understand the cross and the blood. And then the next one, action plans, action plans. Okay, action plan. I have a plan. When you look at somebody who is, I, he's a dog, I have a plan for him. He must woof, woof, woof outside there. He has action plan. I'm going to get you, I'm going to encourage you to lay eggs. It's not going to happen. Hello. Action plan according to your identity. Here on earth, you're going to be a child of God, you're going to be a son of God, you're going to be the bride of Christ for eternity. But here on earth, you must be the light of the world. Action plan for the light. You must be connected with the electricity of prayer. You must shine where God has put you. Action plan for the salt, so that the meat don't frot and rot, and is some stinking stuff, and the whole blue and is stinking, and the nation is rotting in a lot of hamors. Why? Because there's corruption. No, because the church is not acting like the salt that must preserve the food that is, that the meat don't rot, that it become lekker botong, or something like that. Some of you guys know what it is. No, you don't know. Anybody know what's Bolton? Look at me like a cow for a new gate. Yes. Or are you here? Oh, don't, don't, don't die now. Are you here? Just make your neighbor in love and say, we're going for a landing. Four and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes and we are finished. Okay. There we go. Action plan as the lights of the world. You have no plan if you don't know who you are. I'm not talking about who you are in Christ for eternity. I'm talking about how you are called here on earth. I'm called. If you know I am a medical doctor, I'm called as a medical doctor, you know that you're not going to build roads. You're not so stupid. You know if you're a medical doctor. So if you know you're the light of the world, there's certain things you will do. You know you're the salt, you will certain things do. Uh, you know you're ambassador of Christ, you'll make sure that you have the right word of this kingdom in your heart. If you know you're a co-worker with Christ, there's certain ways that you will do things. If you know you are the fragrance of Christ, then you will know how to act. If you know you're the letter of Christ, you allow now to be written on your heart. And in the week, the people around you will read the Bible. You will be the living gospel. What they will read and say, it's a fake story for people that need a crutch they don't know how to handle life. They call it the Jesus story. And they see through your life. It's just some other crutch story. Or they look at your life and they realize, Whoo, there's an eternal plan that God has for me. I can just see it through what he says, what he prays, what he talks about, how he reacts to me, how he, how he has a life. Amen. So understand your action plan based on who you are. Okay? Not chicken, eagle. Eagle, don't, don't scrap. What is scrap? In the ground for a worm. Okay, eagle, but you out up there and you look for the snake. You look. You understand what I'm saying? Oh. Okay, so that's your action plan. And with that action plan, knowing who you are and what, how God has called you, then you come into your daily routine. 
Oh man. And then there's meaning tomorrow in your day. Then Monday is a, has eternal value. Then Monday you, you can do life with God. Uh, but, but it's not just going to be there. We must understand the processes even in our Father's prayer, in the, in the Lord's prayer. Are you with me? But for you to get into that place. And then it says, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. How does it mean? In your daily routine, you're going to have success. You're going to have stature. You're going to have authority. When you grow in success, you become into a place of leadership. And with your success, you're going to say one thing. Only by God's grace. To Him belongs the kingdom. I'm not going to build my kingdom. I cannot build my kingdom. God help me with my thoughts, with my opinions, with my ideas, with my uh, uh, arrogance that I hear the word, but my mind are in a different place. That's how you teach yourself arrogance with demonic, in a demonic way. When you hear the word and your mind is in a different other places. Go, go out, but go out with the establishment of more of arrogance in your life. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking when you're busy with the word, when you're busy with God, when you're busy with life. Okay, you are here? Now. God's going to help us all, man. God's going to help the church. Okay, so what am I saying? Yours is the kingdom. God, all success is unto you. You have the final say. To you be the glory. With what I accomplish, I want to honor you. With what I have, I want to bring it before you. Even with a mess through the cross, I want to bring before you. Thank you for your grace. Through the success, thank you, Lord, for what you have accomplished through my life. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. My energy is from you. My motivation is from you. My driving force is from you. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Glory is God's beauty. All the beauty in my life, Lord, is because of you. Because of you. If I've done something great, it's because of the beauty of God in my life and through you. Are you with me? Just right down there, we're ending off with this scripture. Sorry for those who wanted to hear a sermon for the next hour. You have to stop now. Nah. Forgive me. Okay. Who forgive me? Nobody. Huh? Oh, that's a trick. You think you're going to get something. <laughs> ah, David. God has a sense of humor. Amen. Okay. Ah. Summit. What is mankind that you are mindful of him? Human beings that you care for them. What? Who are you, men? Who are you to be known by the creator of this, the heaven and earth? Who are you? What is mankind? What do you think of yourself? Every form of a trillionth of a piece of beauty is only because of him. Who are you that God will stop the creator of the universe that holds the universe in his hand. Oh, man, we don't understand what that means. Hold the universe in his hand, and then he will stand still with you. And he will listen to what you have to say. What is mankind? You have made them little lower than the angels, when, than created beings, God himself, and crowned them with glory and honor, with beauty and honor. You gave them stature. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. Works of your hands. Your work rule over you. But God makes you that you can rule over his beautiful work. That's amazing. You put everything under their feet. Lord, oh God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. He crowned you with his glory. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the... It's his glory over your life. You are not supernatural being. You need to be supernatural to overcome the chamors. But at the end of the day, you must be the human being God has called you to be. He made humans. And you must be human. Not super spiritual, freaky, freaky, freaky. But... In the supernatural you move so that you can become the human God has called you to be. A human. Who are this human? That God will stand with you. He will see you. He will hear you. He will give himself to you. He will relate to you. He, he will put you in the center of his dream. 
as a father. How, who are you? And then he comes and he crowns you with his glory. He crowns you with his beauty. So if you cannot look into the mirror and see the beauty of your life, say, God, help me with this process. Help me with this process because I need to see your beauty in my life. I, see, I need to see your definition of when you call me beautiful. Let's say, God calls me beautiful. If I work with him. He wants to establish beauty in your life because he has created you to be beautiful. He has created you to be beautiful because beauty must worship him. Beauty, beauty. The beauty in the nations must say, wow, to the beauty of God. It, must be, it will be beautiful sons and daughters, beautiful nations that for eternity will live with him as father. God, help us to understand how to proclaim your plans. Help us to understand, Lord, how to live from that place. Forgive us, Lord, for many times hear the story, the stories from the word and, and, and agreeing with stories instead of proclaiming the truth. Forgive us for giving many other stuff and opinions authority and that we will live according to that proclamation. But God, I pray for every man, woman, that they will have a hunger to sit with you, a hunger for your word, a hunger for your presence, a hunger to be dependent on you. Please, Lord, I pray for that, that your humility will protect each one of us to understand how to be dependent on you, to live the dream that you have in your heart for each one of us, Lord. Walk this road with each one of us, Lord, and that we will proclaim that only you are good and that everything, everything belongs to you. Thank you that you come and do that in our lives, Lord. I pray for that. Arrest us with your truth in that. I pray that in Jesus' name. And all say, amen, amen.